You know, there's something really special about being able to potentially pack so much computational power into such a small volume. We're talking not much larger than an Xbox One X console, which is about as big as you'd ever want to take anything with you, right? If, if it's any bigger than that, it's an inconvenience to carry it in your backpack, assuming you can even fit it in there if it's larger, uh, and then bring it with you as like a check-in bag or carry-on. You got to worry about people throwing stuff. If you have to ship it with UPS, trust me, don't do that. So the idea of an ultra-portable PC is really entertaining to me. My goal is to be able to take this PC with me to Computex in Taiwan in June and edit on this rig using like the hotel TV or whatever we're gonna have at our disposal there. I'll bring a mouse and keyboard and boom, we're good to go. Because trust me, editing on a MacBook, it's much better than editing on like a Dell XPS 13, but it still has its severe limitations. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is the sweet tech porn, the B-roll, the construction of this PC, and then afterwards, we're gonna talk about what I plan to do in part two to make this PC even more unique than it probably already is. If someone else already has this exact build out there, dang it. I'm sure many of you have like similar builds, but the custom sleeve cables, I think, are just like the icing on the cake here. The scythe cooler looks sweet. Uh, and I think that it just all of this kind of came together so perfectly and beautifully in the Fractal Design Node 202 that I'm excited for part two. So I'll stop rambling. Here is the build log.
Now right off the top, I want to discuss a few things you might be wondering about the build. First off, the CPU cooler it has literally perfect clearance. So this is like a textbook definition of perfect when it comes to just the idea of two different components that don't, you know, that aren't manufactured by the same company working together so beautifully. Uh, so the, the cooler itself actually touches the bottom of the dust filter on the top panel of the Fractal Node 202. At first I was kind of disappointed there, but it's not actually touching the fins of the fan because those are slightly recessed inside the fan's frame. So this is perfect. I don't mind it touching the, the, the frame. You know, it's not like I have to force the top cover on there. It is a textbook fit. Uh, and I would recommend this this cooler in particular to anyone looking to build in the Fractal Design Node 202. Something else I'm disappointed myself for because I didn't plan far enough ahead and think about this in advance was the, the fact that there is no 1070 Ti for the Win 2 card in this build, even though it's linked down below. I recommend you get that thing over a Founders Edition card like this because I think the price is starting to come down now. You usually can get like a package deal with an EVGA card, so you can check those out below. Um, and I was really glad that Jacob was able to send one of these cards out to slot 1070 TI for the Win 2. The problem is though, it requires two 8-pin VGA cables and I only had one 8-pin and one 6-pin made in the cable mod configurator. So that was my fault. I didn't realize that the card required two 8-pins, so I was stuck with just uh, one 8 and one 6, and that meant that I had to use the Founders Edition 1070 that I purchased myself from Best Buy a while back. Um, so it doesn't fill the entire like graphics card compartment of the Node 202. The 1070 Ti for the Win 2 would have. That's the only thing I wish I could still change uh, at this point in time. Another thing I'm sure a few of you are wondering is why I only chose a 250GB M.2 SSD. This is a Samsung 860 drive, and it's a pretty sweet one for what it is, but it's it's pretty small as well, right? Most people would prefer at least a 500, like a half terabyte to a terabyte uh, worth of storage is pretty mainstream nowadays if you're gonna go with only an SSD and not something like a hard drive to complement your storage space. Uh, I was just actually a little impatient. I didn't wanna wait for the 500 gig drive coming from ADATA. Uh, that's gonna be here Saturday, but this build, I was just, I wanted to put it together. I was so excited to see how it would turn out. Uh, so I went ahead and threw the 860 Evo, which is what I had on hand into the rig. And if I need to upgrade later, not a big deal. Lastly, I wanna mention the icing on the cake, the Corsair SF600 fully modular SFX power supply paired with cable mod cables. These are custom sleeved pro cables. I got them in all silver because I figured it would match the accents on both the graphics card as well as our ASUS Z170i ITX motherboard, which was a great board, by the way. You can find all these parts linked down below if you wanna build something similar for yourself, uh, but the cables, you know, you might be wondering why I chose custom sleeve cables in a build that you can't see inside of, and that has to do with part two, which is coming soon. I'm not going to say too much about it, but I think you'll really enjoy uh, the case mod we're going to conduct here. Uh, the other thing, though, is the power supply. You got to have a, a fully modular power supply if you want to use these cables, because if you're going to use extensions, you might not have the space to use extensions in a case like the Node 202. It's pretty restrictive, even using like the stock power supply that came with the Node 202 is gonna have a bit of like cable mumbo jumbo because it's just, there's not enough space in there, right? Uh, so having custom length, custom sleeve cables was a priority for me in this build. And I think I got everything almost perfect. I just kind of eyeballed stuff. I was like, yeah, it's like, yeah, 200 millimeters. That, that seems like enough for this one. And this cable might need 300 millimeters. And I was kind of just eyeballing it and it actually worked out pretty well. I didn't have any excess cabling anywhere. But anyway, if you're interested in putting together cables like I did, you can check out Cable Mods Configurator linked in the video description. And uh, you can either design some sleeving extensions, which are good for power supplies that don't have modular support, uh, or you can have cables that plug directly into your power supply as long as it's supported on the configurator website. Huge thanks to CableMod for putting the icing on the cake with this one. Uh, th these cables are just perfect, and the idea of like you know specifying the lengths of cables was so good for a build like this because there again there's not much space in this case for excess cabling. But anyway, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed at least watching the tech porn, if not me talking. I totally get it. I'm not offended, uh, and and I had a lot of fun building this one because again it, it was a challenge in a sense that it was really you know, compact, but at the same time, I think it pays off because it, there's just no wasted space in here. And I can't wait for part two. Stay tuned for that. If it's not already in the card above, that's because I'm still working on it. Uh, as of filming this, of course, I'm still working on it, but I think it's really going to pay off. So stick around for that. Give us one of thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. You can be critical in the comments. It's totally fine. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.